Welcome to Utah's Fly Corner. Time we're going to show you how to tie a snowshoe cripple. It's your standard cripple pattern just with a snowshoe wing. Hook I have here in the vise is a Daiichi 1180 size 16. I'm going to do this one in a, in a Betis or blue winged olive as you want to call it. Start the thread up by the shank wind it down a little past a quarter of the way and stop there. Next get yourself a length of ultra wire extra small. For a bigger size use small wire. For 16 and smaller use the extra small. Just break yourself off a length. You want a decent length of at least 8 inches or so. Now take your length of ultra wire and tie it in on the way back. Tie it right in, right up to that butt. Nice and tight. Next, for this size fly, we're only going to need two to three pheasant tail fibers. You want to try and keep these uh, flies pretty thin with a smaller size like this. Just select two and then you can just pull them off. I'm also going to use brown marabou. Marabou feather, it's just like any other feather, it's got barbs on it. If you stroke them back, you can see them. Just pull out. Usually I'll pull off two or three. Usually I end up losing one in the mix as I'm going. But two is what you, what you really want. Once you have your marabou and your pheasant tail, Simply put them together and line the butt ends of them up so you have the tips. Take the butt ends, hold them close to the hook shank, bring your thread around once loose, and then just start to pull them in until you get pretty close to the ends of those pheasant tails. Take one more turn to secure. You can then take your scissors and snip away your pheasant tail. At this point we're going to make a dubbing loop with the wire. When you're forming your loop make sure that the loop is no longer than your pheasant tail butts and your marabou butts. Make it a little bit shorter and let those extend out past. And then you just simply catch catch the wire. So then we just bring our thread around and catch that wire on the side there and then with your finger and thumb grab grab the wire in your material and make sure that you got that wire wrap the thread back so that the wires are touching one another and then you'll want to wind the thread forward tying down your second piece of wire and tying in the rest of your butts of your material with these flies I don't really bother with a tail on them. They work just as well when the tail breaks off of them, so I don't bother putting the tail on them. And then just break your wire off. Now we're ready to spin our loop. Great tool to use, especially when doing this method, is this little shepherd's hook because you hold your materials in the middle and hold your bring your shepherd's hook through the loop and then catch the hook on the inside of the loop bring it back in and then simply just pull down and what that does is it locks the fibers in there and then you can twist and just continue to twist don't twist too much or else you'll break your materials or you'll end up breaking the wire. But I like to, I simply put my bobbin over my finger like so and I keep my material attached to the shepherd's hook. I like to use my vise to wind this on. 
touch and turns, wind it around. If you're not twisted up enough, once you reach the upper part, just give it some more twist. Wind it right on up to where your thread is patiently waiting. And then you can tie it off. Remove your shepherd's hook. Just make sure you got it tied down tight. What I'm doing is going over it and then onto the shank. Take a pair of uh, sturdier scissors. Don't use your good scissors to do that because it'll just dull them out quick and, and you got to spend time sharpening them, which you'll eventually have to do with your good ones. But Then we have our nymphy abdomen, abdomen form. You can get yourself some olive super fine dubbing. You only want a very little bit. You don't want hardly any dubbing at all. And we're going to dub. Only dub with very small amount. You want to dub nice and tight with this kind of dubbing. That way it's water. The dubbing's waterproof. It doesn't absorb water. But if your dubbing's loose, water gets in between the fibers. And that's what causes it to get waterlogged in the sink. So if you use very little bits of dubbing at a time, you can get a very tight noodle. And we only need just a touch of dubbing on there. And then we want to wind our dubbing, wind it right in front of there, and back over that area where you tied tied off your your body. And then we're going to want to advance the thread right up to the eye, right behind the eye there. And we're going to tie in our snowshoe. With a snowshoe foot, they'll come as a whole foot. You can easily grab the toes and start pulling it apart. And then it takes a little bit of muscle, but just rip them right in half. Once you have them in half, it's a lot easier to get to the to fur to cut it off. Because uh, you really want to get to this heel stuff here. This is the prime area of the foot. This stuff works well, but it's not nearly as as good as uh, the heel portion. And you can see I already been uh, working on this foot. And once you got it cut in half, you can just cut yourself off a clump. You don't need much. Usually, you end up cutting uh, more than you're going to end up needing. But once you have the clump cut off, pull out all the under fuzz. Just hold those tips and pull out anybody that's short. You can stack it if you want by pulling out the long ones and then eating them up, putting them back into the clump, and you can stack it. But I find it's just as easy once it's tied on to just take your thumb down and just break off the break off the uh, the ends to even them up if you want. About measure it to be about three quarters the size of the length of the shank of the hook. And I bring it right in front, real close. I hold it right in there, real, real nice and close. And I pinch and loop, and slide that thread down through my fingers. And quick, do that again, and then quickly wrap back over it. Just gonna get it right where we want it. And we're gonna take our scissors, we're gonna come right in, and leave a little bit of this, a little clump there. Don't cut it too close, because the way this is going to sit, this is going to be down in the water, and this will be sticking straight up, and this will be your focal point. And this, um, quickly uh, believed that you know it showed a little bit of a wing case, uh, the wing case and the wing starting to emerge from the from the nymph. But that's the original way to do it. And They've always worked for me, so that's the way I keep doing them. Now we're going to get our hackle. You'll want to select yourself off either a saddle hackle or a neck hackle. I really, with this pattern, I really prefer saddle hackle, especially whitings. But just select yourself one off of size. It's a size 16, so use a size 16. You can use your hackle gauge to measure it or the shankier hook to measure it. Once you got your saddle hackle, 
selected. Let's cut off the butt and reveal back some of those barbs and then you can just trim them short. Then we can bring the stem right in there, tie it down nice and tight, and leave your thread right behind your snowshoe. And don't wrap onto your snowshoe, forcing it down. Make sure that you've got room here. And we want to wind our hackle. You don't want a lot of hackle on these flies. That's why I like the saddle hackle. It's a nice stiff hackle, and the whiting has plenty of barbs. So you're going to get enough hackle to float the fly. Just take two turns and that is it. Bring your thread over, holding your hackle up tight. Keep that thread nice and tight. Bring it over again, nice and tight. And I like to just pull everything back and wrap onto that front of that eye. Then forgetting everybody, whip finish the fly. My knot going, and then whip finish. Snip my thread, and get my snowshoe down out of the way. And then you can get to any material without cutting anything off. Just simply bring your your points of your scissors in, bring them right down over your hackle, and snip. That'll save you a lot from uh, cutting off a lot of your hackles. Otherwise, uh, you end up chopping off all your hackles. That's why it's good to have a nice, fine point, pointed scissors. That's the snowshoe cripple. They take uh, a couple minutes to tie, um, especially doing the dubbing loop. But the, with the dubbing loop, what that really uh, guarantees is that the fly lands properly every time because fish will take it when the fly's riding in the water like this but hands down it's much more effective when the fly let me turn around the vise here is riding like this in the water with this portion here right up to the hackle is submerged and the fish will be able to, underneath the film, they see the dubbing, they see this little bit of a snowshoe clump, and they see that nice buggy looking body. And with the marabou on there, you really get some uh, nice fibers sticking out that are really going to, it's really going to show the uh, life to it. And then what's above the water that you can see is your snowshoe sticking up above the water. But make sure you tie these up. They work great for all kinds of mayfly hatching. It's a really great fly. That's the Snowshoe Cripple. I'm Johnny Utah. Check me out on my site, www.utahsflycorner.com. Thanks for watching. We can share the women, we can share the wine. We can share what we got of yours, cause we got shared.